Section 11.3 is about expected value. This can also be called expectation. The expected value is often used to determine the expected results of an experiment or business venture over the long term. So what is the expectation that will happen over the next 10, 15, 20 years? Or if you're gambling, what's the expectation if you sat at the craps table for the next three hours? How much would you be up? The formula for expected value takes the probability of each event um, times the net amount won or lost at each event. If you lose an amount, make sure that you use a negative number for loss. You will multiply the probability times the amount for each of the occurrences, and then you will add all of these together, and that'll tell you the expected amount or the average at the end of the period of time. So for an example, um, JetBlue Airlines is considering adding a route from Boston to Minneapolis. Before making a decision, the company needs to consider many factors, including potential profit or loss. After considerable research, JetBlue estimates, estimates that if it adds the route, there is a 60% chance of making an annual $800,000 profit, a 10% chance of breaking even, which means no profit, no loss, and a 30% chance of losing $1 million. How much can JetBlue expect to make annually on this new route? Okay, so there's three scenarios here. They're either going to make $800,000, they're going to break even, or they're going to lose a million dollars. So the expected value is going to take the probability of each event times the amount of each event. So there's a 60% chance, which is 0 0.60, that they make $800,000 plus there is a 10% chance of breaking even plus there is a 30% chance that they lose a million dollars. Now when you lose you need to consider that a negative. So you'll multiply all three of those together and you'll add them up. And when you do that, <clears throat> JetBlue can expect to make $180,000. So it may be worth the risk for them. Let's look at another example. When Josh attends a charity event, he is given a free ticket for the $50 door prize. A total of 100 tickets will be given out. Determine his expectation of winning the door prize. Okay, so again, we're looking for the expected value. Um, we're going to assume that there's only one winning ticket out of the 100 that we're given, and that it, Josh paid $0 to enter the door prize. That's important because if he paid money, you need to include that in the expected value calculation. Okay, so um, we're going to find the, his expected value at the end. The prize is $50. So if he wins, he gets 50 bucks. But the probability of winning is only one out of 100. Um, if he loses, it costs him nothing because he got a free ticket. Now, if he had to pay for the ticket, you would include that as a negative number. So say the ticket was $5, you would put that as a negative five. The probability of losing is 99 out of 100. So what is Josh's expected value at the end of the day? Well, zero times anything is zero. So you would end up with 50 over 100, which if you divide that out is 50 cents. So he can expect to make 50 cents. So he probably shouldn't depend on this winning. Another concept in this section is what's called fair price. The fair price is the amount to be paid that results in an expected value of zero dollars. The fair price can be found by adding the cost to play to the expected value. So let's look at an example that incorporates expectation and fair price. At a game of chance, the expected value is found to be negative $1.50 and the cost to play the game is $4. 
determine the fair play of the game, fair price to play the game. So remember, all you have to do to calculate the fair price is you take the expected value that you calculated plus the cost to play the game. The fair price of the game is actually $2.50. So this is often what casinos do. This is how they keep their doors open. They charge you above the fair price so that they can make a profit.